Today, we are going to continue talking about Thevenin and, and Norton equivalent circuits, and we are going to discuss what happens, or really how to deal with things, when dependent sources are present. And the only real difference arises in how we can compute our Thevenin resistance. So let's start with an example. So let's say that I have the following circuit where I have, let's say a voltage source here that is 12 volts, um, a 10 ohm resistor here, Let me make this a dependent source. So here's terminal A, here's terminal B. Let's make this um, five ohm resistor. And I'm going to define the current IX as the current flowing from left to right through the 10 ohm source, like so. So what I want us to find first is VTH, and then I want us to find I Norton. And then lastly, I want us to find our Thevenin resistance, okay? So just to refresh you guys' memory, because it's been the better part of a week since we dealt with anything dealing with Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits, um, the Thevenin voltage is going to be the voltage across the open circuited terminals of our network. I'm going to choose my positive polarity on top, which in turn means that I Norton is going to be direction down as a reference, okay? So, in finding VTH here, and I hope this is going to work out because I literally just made this circuit up, um, I'm just going to redraw my circuit here. So, we, here we have 12 volts. Here's our 10 ohm resistor. Here's our twice IX current controlled voltage source. Our 5 ohm resistor. Here's IX. And this voltage right here would be VTH. So I can already make a couple of observations that will assist me in things. So the first observation I can make is that there is no current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor because it is not part of a closed current carrying path. And from that, I can say that since this current has to be 0 amps, this voltage has to be 0 volts, which means VTH is really just the voltage drop across this dependent current source, according to Kirchhoff's voltage law. Right. So I know from the jump that VTH is simply twice IX, which means now I just really need to know what IX is in order to determine my feminine voltage. Does anybody have any thoughts on how I might solve for that current IX? So, um, Yes, but no, or, or really no, but yes. And let me explain what I mean by that. There's only one mesh because there's only one closed current carrying path. 
So it's really just Kirchhoff's voltage law that we are going to do, which is what we do when we apply mesh analysis. But here, since we're only applying it once, I would hesitate to even bother calling it mesh. So that's why you are both correct and incorrect at the same time, okay? So because we know that no current can branch off and flow to the right through that five ohm resistor, there is only one singular current flowing in the circuit around that left-hand loop. So writing KVL, at our left-hand loop, we're going to wind up getting um, negative 12 volts plus 10 ohms times Ix plus 2 Ix is equal to zero. And oh, I made this way too easy. Um, Ix turns out to be 1 amp because I feel pretty strongly that 12 Ix is equal to 12 volts means that Ix is equal to 1. So from that, our Thevenin voltage is 2 volts. Anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns about the analysis we've done here? Fairly straightforward stuff. All right. So now let's find I Norton. So just as a reminder, our Norton current is the short circuit current. So I am just going to short out that pair of terminals on the right-hand side. So I'm just redrawing my circuit. I'm going to short my terminals and my reference direction for my Norton current should be down based on the polarity that I chose for the 7 and voltage. Um, here is Ix. So how would we solve for I Norton? Ian, hit me with it. Mesh analysis is probably the best way to do this particular one. Okay. So um, I can notice actually pretty easily that my mesh current for the left-hand loop is the exact same thing as Ix, and my mesh current for the right-hand loop is actually the same thing as the Norton current that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to use those as my mesh current variables. So applying mesh analysis... Um, would mean that we'd need to do KVL around uh, mesh X and KVL around mesh NO. So let's do that. So KVL around mesh X is going to look like negative 12 volts plus 10 ohms IX plus twice IX is equal to zero. And KVL around mesh and O is going to look like negative twice IX plus 5 ohms I Norton is equal to zero. And I'm going to solve this system. So let me just grab a calculator out of my bag here. Hey, I brought my TI today. So solving this system. Um, in my first equation, my coefficient for Ix is 12. My coefficient for I Norton is 0. My constant term is 12. So it looks like Ix is just going to be 1 again. Um, then in my second equation, my coefficient for Ix is negative 2. Uh, my coefficient for I Norton is 5, and my constant term is 0. And in solving this system, I get Ix is equal to 1 amp, and I Norton is equal to 2 fifths of an amp or 0 0.4 amps. Whichever way you choose to represent it, it's fine by me.
So anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns about how we applied mesh analysis here to find Einorton? Again, pretty darn straightforward. So for part C, there are a multitude of different ways that we can approach this. So I'm going to start with our basic definition, okay? So our Thevenin resistance should be our Thevenin voltage divided by our Norton current. So that would be two volts divided by two-fifths of an amp should give me five ohms. If I did that mental math correctly, and if I didn't, please tell me. But I feel fairly strongly that I did it right. So this method requires us to know both VTH and I Norton in order for this to work. Now, let's see what would happen if we tried to find the Thevenin resistance directly, like we did for the circuits that did not contain any dependent sources, right? So for that to work, I need to be looking at a dead network. So I'm going to turn off my independent voltage source. Here I have my 10 ohm resistor. This is twice IX, where this is my current IX. Here I have my 5 ohm resistor. And I would find the resistance looking in to the terminals of my dead node. So who can tell me what the problem is with this? Pretty obvious, I think. The dependent source there means that I can't just do resistor combination techniques anymore because that isn't a resistor. So we need to come up with some sort of alternative method for calculating our Thevenin resistance directly for a circuit that contains a dependent source. So I'm going to take you guys back to what we looked at when we were talking about Ohm's law on the third day of class, okay? So this is just a reminder. Um, why is this? Yeah, I'll just go to the next page. I don't know why my taskbar won't go away so that I can press the button. It lets me just flip pages real quick, but anyway. So way back when we were introducing the concept of Ohm's law, I told you guys that if we had any linear network and we excited said network does not matter if we excited things with a voltage source or a current source so that's why I'm leaving this circle blank because it really doesn't matter at all if we found the voltage drop across the terminals of the network and the current flowing into the network then the resistance of the network was simply the ratio of the voltage drop across the network's terminals divided by the current flowing into the network's terminals, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to apply a test source, okay? So we are going to supply some sort of excitation to this dead network, and then we are going to figure out what voltage appears across its terminals, what current's flowing into its terminals, and then the ratio of those two things will give us our Thevenin resistance. So we have two options. We can either apply a test voltage source or a test current source, okay? So let me scooch this down just a smidge, and I'm gonna make a note here that we are applying a test voltage source first, okay? So what I'm gonna work it with both a test voltage source and a test current source to prove that we are gonna get the exact same answer, okay? So all I'm going to do is across the open circuited terminals, I'm going to apply a voltage source, okay? So, 
would you guys prefer that my voltage source is positive polarity on top or positive polarity on bottom? It literally doesn't matter. Positive on the top. Thank you for that, Ashton. So this is my test voltage source. And I would like for somebody to give me a value for my test voltage source. And it also literally doesn't matter. So I think Connor over here was suggesting one, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to say. So we're just arbitrarily applying a one volt source across the terminals of our network, which forces the voltage drop across the terminals of our network to be exactly one volt. And so what we're looking for now is this current I test that's flowing into our network, okay? So our Thevenin equivalent resistance for this case should be simply the ratio of V test over I test. And so that will be one volt divided by whatever we happen to get for I test. So what method do you guys think I should use to solve for I test? Mesh seems like a reasonable thing here because we're trying to find a current, right? So, once again, I've got this mesh current, which is the exact same thing as IX, so I'm going to leave that alone. And then I have this mesh current, which I'm just going to call IY, and we can see by observation that IY is just negative I test. Everybody okay with that state? All right. So, applying KVL around mesh X, I'm going to get 10 ohms times IX plus twice IX is equal to zero, which is actually only true for IX is equal to zero. And when I apply KVL around mesh Y, I'm going to get negative twice IX, which we know this whole thing is going to go to zero, plus 5 ohms times IY plus 1 volt is equal to zero. So rearranging this slightly, I would have... Five ohms IY is equal to negative one volt. So IY should be negative one fifth of an amp. I test is just negative IY. So that comes out to be positive one fifth of an amp. And so one volt divided by one-fifth of an amp gives me the exact same five ohms that I got earlier. So before we move on to applying a test current source, does anybody have any questions about what we did here, right? So all we did is we applied a test voltage source. The polarity of the voltage source is completely arbitrary. The value of the voltage source is completely arbitrary. For what it's worth, the reason why neither of those things matters at all is because of the linearity of the circuit for reasons that we discussed, right? The scaling factor of linearity says the ratio of that voltage to current is always going to be constant, so it literally does not matter what voltage I apply there. I will always get five volts, or excuse me, uh, five ohms as that resistance or that ratio. Okay. Um, the circuit analysis method that we chose here Mesh analysis, I chose that, or, or we chose that collectively, largely because we were looking for a current and we couldn't really apply anything else easily. So it won't always be apply a mesh to do this thing. This particular circuit, mesh is just the easiest route. Okay. Um, so any questions before we move on to test current source? Okay. So, if we were to apply a test current source,
we would have our original circuit, um, except that it's a dead network. So we only apply a test source to a dead network because we're calculating, uh, we're using it to calculate the Thevenin resistance, which is always determined with a dead network. So we've got our short circuit replacing our 12 volt source. Here's our 10 ohm resistor. Here's our dependent source. So that's twice IX, where this current is IX. Here's our five ohm resistor. And then across the terminals of this network, I am now going to apply a current source. Once again, the direction of the current source is completely arbitrary. So somebody just pick up or down, up, okay. The value is completely arbitrary. So somebody just pick a number, one. Okay, you guys are making it easy on me. And so from this, we can see very easily that I test is exactly equal to one amp. And now we're looking for the quantity V test, right? So once again, R thevenin should be the ratio of V test to I test, which will be whatever voltage we get divided by one amp. So if I were a betting man, I have a stinging suspicion that V test is gonna wind up being five volts. So how can we solve for this voltage V test? I don't want to do mesh again, um, not for any particular reason other than I'm bored with using it. So let's throw nodal at this thing and just see what shakes out, right? So I'm going to choose this bottom terminal as ground. So I'm going to have some nodal voltage. I'm going to call it VA here and VB here. And because of where I chose ground, um, we should see that V test is exactly equal to VB. Everybody able to see that? Okay. So we do indeed have a controlling variable in this case. So what would our controlling variable equation be? Negative VA over 10 ohms. So the current is starting at ground and flowing towards VA. So we have zero minus VA over the 10 ohm resistor, okay? Um, we also have a voltage source. So we have the relationship that VA is equal to twice IX. And for what it's worth, we can actually solve this system so if VA is twice IX, that means that we would have VA is equal to negative 2 VA over 10 ohms or VA plus twice VA over 10 ohms is equal to zero, which can only be true if VA is zero. That only works for this particular case. We would also need to apply KCL at node B. So that would look like um, VB minus VA over five ohms minus one amp is equal to zero. Since VA is equal to zero, this looks like VB over five ohms is equal to one amp which means VB is equal to five volts, which is the same as V test. And if you wanted to just throw this system in a calculator and have it do all this stuff for you, you're welcome to do that. But we wind up getting five volts here. And so our Thevenin resistance is once again, five volts, which it has to be, it can't be different even if we're trying a different analysis technique. So, we got the exact same results applying the ratio of the Thevenin voltage to the Norton current, applying a test voltage source and applying a test current source. So we have three different methods that we can use to solve for RTH 
in a circuit that contains a dependent source. The only thing that I want to make you guys very, very aware of, and I've already mentioned this at least once, anytime we are finding the Thevenin resistance directly, we are using a dead network. So anytime that you're applying the test source method, you have to apply the test source to a dead network, meaning all of the independent voltage and current sources are turned off. All of the independent, sorry, I had that backwards. All of the independent voltage and current sources are turned off. All of the dependent sources are always left on. Okay. All right. Um, unless you guys have any questions, I don't really have anything else to talk about today. So we've got an in-class assignment and a mini lab.